in all my time playing World of Warships. By not all my time, I mean the last few years. I've seen many, many silly things, many brilliant things, many extraordinarily clever things. This, however, I have never, ever seen. This is my first game in the Hermes. Now, this isn't about what I'm doing, but about what's happening in front of me right now. Leamanda Wall in the Wakeful is driving towards Maya Castor, who's stuck, shooting at him, beached. And I'm desperately using everything in my power, what I've got available to me, to try and save the Acasta. He's shooting, but he's not torpedoing. The Wakeful, laying smoke, has driven past the Acasta who's beached. Maybe he hasn't got any torps? Oh no, there they go. I do not know what I'm witnessing. Unreal. Answers on a postcard. Shipmates and welcome to another episode of Let's Make Mistakes. Today we are driving the newly released HMS Exeter. It is a tier 5-4 game, so we can expect some interesting matchmaking. And we can expect some interesting play as well. Uh, I am myself piloting HMS Exeter uh, with my division mate Urban Slayer who is piloting the other HMS Exeter which is just off my port side right now. This is a standard battle so we are looking to capture the base and make mistakes as we do so. Uh, there will be some efforts of coordination between the two ships uh, you'll see some choreographed dancing and moving around as we try and manoeuvre our way through this game. And there's our first rocket strike. Let's put a nice bit of damage on our nose. Uh, so what we're looking to do now is push forwards and stop any immediate attack on our base. This isn't my first game in the Exeter. There were a couple of games, so we'll try and talk through what we were doing on the way up here. Um, this will involve kiting. The HE is not too bad on the boat. The AP is okay on the boat. However, <laughs> dispersion, as you're going to see at various different points during this video, is somewhat questionable, to say the least. So, we've spotted some ships coming towards us. They are moving inside of our 14.3 gun range. Uh, we had AP loaded there, so that's what we dispensed in the direction of the Monaghan before switching across to the much more favourable HE, which should be better for dealing with cruisers, battle, um, destroyers even. Uh, we don't see too much there, because we've already changed targets. We've gone for the Nuremberg, we've opened fire there, a nice opening salvo, 2822 damage, 3 penetrations, good start. Uh, you'll notice um, I moved my defensive sector across to the left, and that's now been switched to the right, unfortunately from the replay file it doesn't show too well. Uh, we have fired AP at the Nuremberg, see what we can get there while we try to look to take advantage of this smoke cloud. Uh, this is of course in patch 8.0.3 which was released today to EU. So you'll notice one of the new features in chat there is Urban Slayer. I'm using Hydroacoustic Search, so all that's telling us there is the minute he's pressed the button, he's pressed his Y key to enable his Hydroacoustic Search, 
that it's been published to chat, so we're all aware that he's using it, which is obviously very, very useful team information. Now, what we have learned about the Exeter so far is that she's a very manoeuvrable little ship. Cue that Nicholas has just popped up, by the way, four kilometres away from me. Things get interesting here, actually, with the dispersion of these guns. I'm going to blame dispersion and not my aim, because you see that crosshair is on him. We've zoomed in on him, we fired on his turn, and we've hit the water. Not to worry, we'll be reloaded again quite shortly and we'll have another go. Although my secondaries have managed to start a fire on him. Here he comes again, let's have another shot off his bow. No, that's missed as well. Don't worry, we can have another go at this in a second. Just going to do a little bit of jogging here just to move away from these torpedoes. The rear guns are loaded, we'll have another shot across his bow. Look at the turn. No, no, that's missed as well. <laughs> Four kilometres away, and we can't hit a destroyer. Uh, there's not the only questionable dispersion you're going to see from this, but the manoeuvrability of the boat is excellent. So you see from these torpedoes, I've decided, you know, because I've done a few games, I'm going to execute the turn. So we had the other torpedoes coming towards us, we had to watch. So we turned, and fortunately they've run short, so we got away with it. Uh, I should have moved my defensive AA sector to the left, but I was a little bit busy with dealing with torpedoes coming from my front and my rear, which is also another side effect if it's quite difficult to get across and press the um, AC key to actually change the sector, because you've got to take your hands away from the WASD keys when I'm steering the boat in trouble to try and move my A sector. Something to think about at some point. Maybe they'll look at changing that, make it a bit more intuitive or other buttons you can just press to change the sector. But for now, that was obviously a problem. I was aware of it and uh, it caused me a little bit of panic, but luckily we were able to survive. So uh, working with my teammate, we was on uh, Discord, working this one out together as we went along. Um, we've launched uh, HE towards the Nuremberg, who looks like he's probably going to take one torpedo to the rear. Did he take one? I'm not sure. I don't think he did. But that's not a bad strike at the distance. But this is where the guns start getting a little bit sketchy. Because he's now gone from turning into turning out. So I've decided to change the target here anyway because of the pos position of the push and the Emil Batan and the request for help from Urban Slayer over the comms. We fire at a decent HE volume because that's what we have loaded and we have switched straight to AP because the plan was to uh, go at him with AP with a second. He's only 7.8 kilometers away. We should be able to do some decent damage. However, the Exeter uh, has managed to get him. Well done, so we're going to have a look at this Nuremberg now. He is pushing away, but the angle is still, you know, still possible hit from this angle. AP was already in the pipe, so that's what we're sending. Well, that's not too bad. But that wasn't my damage that did that there. That was Urban Slayer's AP damage that managed to hit him there. So we'll have another go. A 748 hit points. Can't really go too far wrong here, can we? Dispersion will work for us. No, nope. <laughs> all around the ship. <laughs> if they were on the deck, they got wet. Let's put it that way. So now we've uh, managed to deal with the early the early threat against our base, we've decided to turn and start heading north together. Mainly to start dealing with this Aoba, who's just slightly out of gun range at the moment. I said the gun range is 14.3. These are 203mm guns. Uh, so they do take a little bit longer to load. They are a little bit floatier. Damage output is severely questionable on the AP. It's very, very hit and miss. The HE does seem a lot more reliable from earlier games. Uh, this one wasn't too bad. But we're going to push forwards now. We know that um, we need to be careful. There is that DD knocking around near the Pensacola. We did want the Pensacola to uh, pull back a little while ago just to bring himself closer to our AE bubble. But he elected not to. So he set himself up one for one. So there's not a lot we can really do to help him other than pepper down this Aoba that's in front of us at the moment. Uh, just a quick look at the old mini map. We can see our CVs over in one corner there. They're being pushed by an Exeter at the moment. So we just need to be a little bit mindful of how close they are to the base in the proximity of how close we are to moving up the map and getting to their base. But first we're going to need to clear these ships. Uh, despite our request for the uh, Pensacola to move back, that hasn't happened yet. <coughs> and um, 
he's not going to be long for this world unfortunately but we tried uh, when it's a double CV game when you are under attack it's generally a good idea to stay and travel together my sector is actually still on the left at the moment I know Urban Slayer is on the right at this time so we could have turned both our ships in towards each other to um, strengthen our AA sectors and put a plane up if it was needed as well uh, we have managed to get a fire on the Aova who is going to slowly burn and uh, the Monaghan has just disappeared into his smoke cloud over there but we'll deal with him in a little while he's not a major threat to us right now right now if we can get rid of this CV and get rid of this Aova we've cleared this half of the map and we can start working our way across towards the enemy base. And with such, Urban Slayer takes care of the Aova. Kill secure. And the rest of us start working down this uh, ranger who's moving towards us. He didn't go for the traditional island hideout at the back down the middle of light EF8. He moves across this way, which was probably his undoing. Uh, we have plenty of ordnance out. Now switched over to AP because of his angle to us. We should be able to get some decent damage off of that. We do manage to hit a Citadel for 5,000. Uh, he's still hanging alive. The guns were coming round and just decided at this point, well, we should have a go anyway, shouldn't we? <laughs> we weren't going to get that one. Interestingly, the Podvoisky that was just in front of me there managed to secure the kill. So now we've cleared this half of the map. There's a nice smoke cloud over there, so we are going to make our way across to that Monaghan. Uh, I'm not putting hydroacoustics on just yet, because they're not really required. And you notice there, of course, that the CV's dead that he did launch a squadron. And neither one of us were paying too much attention to that, that fact that he'd actually sent that squadron up. So, uh, a reminder that when a CV does die, he can get his last squadron up into the air. And they can still harass you. They've still got the same amount of drops they had before. And if it's above tier 4, he's also got a fighter that he could drop over you as well to harass you. So now I'm moving towards the Omonahan, you'll notice there that I've dropped Hydroacoustic Search. That popped up in the chat, just to let everybody else know on the team I'm using it, which again is really good information. So if there are any torpedoes coming towards us, which I was expecting could be the case, uh, myself and the Poboiski have got a reasonable chance of being able to avoid them. Now, I say this avoid, because it is possible, she is quite a manoeuvrable boat, Despite the fact that even if a DD does decide to drive across the front of you, you only rub a little bit. She is quite a manoeuvrable ship. Now what we were looking at down here was, which is where I pinged the map down by the CVs, the enemy Powoiski has got right on top of our DDs. So I'm splitting the difference with Urban Slay here. We're driving between the two caps with half a mind on that we may have to turn full support and head back to base and defend that from the DD but also keeping our keeping our eye off to the right we can see in the distance a smoke cloud which is from the Huang A who is over there on the far side of the map on the A line so we know he's knocking about we know he we can deal with him a lot later on he's a long way from us so he's no real threat yet uh, the Rangers made himself known so we start to open fire it's just as we notice there that the uh, pod Voisky has managed to get himself killed by the secondaries of the Ranger so well done the Ranger so now our plans have changed a little bit. We can now go after this ranger and start pushing towards their base. But there's still no sign of this mono. Now I'm firing and I'm undetected. So I know he's not in the open water and he's certainly not within 14.4 kilometres of me visibly on the surface. So I'm just going to carry on with this. Now we did switch up between AP and HE here for a few of these volleys. And you will notice that the damage similar when the AP does actually hit it can hit quite hard but it does seem to be somewhat unreliable compared to the HE guns on the ship and we're not doing too bad we've got eight minutes of this game left now we've already got six citadels we've shot down some planes and started some fires and you'll see there that my uh, comrade in arms Urban Slayer has just earned himself the confederate achievement so we're putting through a certain amount of damage in this game at the moment uh, obviously the rangers are key priority so I'm just looking to back this Nicholas up now so I'm going to push down here and Urban Slayer is going to push through the middle just to stop um, the New Mexico hopefully from coming down the middle there and put some damage on him while I deal with the ranger and come into the enemy base from the top uh, struggling to lob over the island here although the reticle, did, the reticle did lie to me a little bit we could lob, we couldn't lob and then we could lob again 
So we're thinking about maybe this is actually the time we're going to kill a ship in this game. Because you know, we've been pretty close to killing a few ships so far, but we haven't actually managed to do so yet. Uh, the Nicholas has managed to um, get this one done with his torpedoes for my shells land. So well done him. And again, as you'll see there, we've also... The squadron's still in the sky, because the CV's gone. But he is still in control of that squadron. And he did also manage to drop a fighter off over there as well. So he's keeping me lit while he's continuing his rocket attacks against our Nicholas. And now, the Monaghan has turned up right down the bottom. So he drove all the way around the map. Probably up around the middle. He's managed to sneak himself into position around the back there. And that's capped off uh, one of our CVs. So he's found himself up against the Bayern now. I'm not sure how healthy he is. But as I approach this cap, uh, I'm asking right there in chat if the Nicholas would be kind enough to set a smoke screen, which is great. So I know the Mexico has just fired there. So I've already opened fire on the Huang He because his guns were not pointing in my direction. I was hoping to kill him with the first volley. We didn't. Uh, we've been a bit presumptuous there and fired the second round of um, second salvo from the uh, rear gunners because the rear gunners never let us down. And they haven't on this occasion either. And now we're in a great position here because this New Mexico's got distance to travel on us. Um, what's it? 6.3, I think it's smoke firing penalty. So I can just sit here and smoke and fire on him. And maybe we'll put some torpedoes out as we have to get him to alter his course or his speed or do something different or unpredictable. And now the Nicholas, who I did thank for the smoke because he'd done well, has decided to come and join me in the smoke. What's wrong with this picture now? Yeah, oh, there's a little wiggle on my mouth there as I'm looking at the Nicholas. Uh, could you spot, please? Because if the Nicholas pushed out now and up the cap away from him, I could be raining down fire on this New Mexico. We could get a fire on him. We could make him change course. Uh, we could do something. And as I've said there, if we sit here, we die. Because he will just drive in there and he will splat the pair of us. Unless something's, nothing, something happens like I torpedo him when they reload, or the Nicholas goes YOLO and torpedoes him as well. And then we have a chance. Now this is interesting, he's opened fire in the attempt to court the New Mexico into doing so as well, and he has. But now he's closed the distance so close to us, I can't fire at him from the smoke. And this is good, you'll notice now how quick I put the power down, the X gets going. She gets up to full speed in about five or six seconds. So she's got a great engine. She is quick. She does move quickly. She does move well. Now again, I've lost visuals on the buying because he hasn't fired. So his debuff of 20 seconds has gone away. But that's because he's reloaded his 30 seconds anyway. So we'll be expecting some more fire soon. Now what would have been more useful here is if the Nicholas had just rushed at the New Mexico, just driven at him, because he could have closed that distance from that smoke to where he was very, very quickly. We know he fired his guns, so there was a good chance we was going to be able to actually get him down nice and quickly. He is the last ship left, so now I'm forced to just push away. This boat does not have particularly good armor, and the New Mexico AP will go through it very, very easily. So I'm trying to predict what way the New Mexico is going to go. We put the torpedoes out, having a little look around, and unsurprisingly, the Nicholas has got himself killed because he stayed too close to the New Mexico. He's taken a main battery volley, and he's out of the game. Uh, so as uh, so I'm kiting away now, just trying to put the damage down this New Mexico and make distance. And uh, he's closing in pretty quickly. Just trying to get a fire back on him now. We're going to get some more torpedoes out in a minute. Now, this was a slight error here. I thought, I don't know why, I thought he'd fired. So you'll see here, I mean, he's angling, but I've turned to bring the front guns around and then to turn hard back out the other way. And he fires now. And yeah, that hurt. That hurt a lot. But we do have a nice heal, so we're going to heal some of that back. Uh, the Rangers dropped him again, that's helped. I believe he's got a second fire on him. So now I'm turning the ship in. I want to close the distance down on the New Mexico as quick as I possibly can. Why the hell am I doing that? <coughs> well, to be honest with you, I'm putting this game, this, into the uh, lap of the gods, into the RNG gods. If we close it down quick, we can torpedo him again. 
And luckily for us, there it is. And that's the game won. The enemy battleship destroyed. So there we go. Uh, we finished with 91,000 damage, 83 hits, 6 citadels, 4 fires, 2 destroyed, uh, we torpedo 1, flooded 1, uh, 577,000 credits, 10,000 XP and 601 free XP. So all in all not too bad. Uh, we did manage to finish top of the team along with Urban Slayer very very closely behind us. Uh, accounted for 5 of the enemy ships and 18 planes over the course of the game. So, what's the verdict of the Exeter? Um, she's fun to play. Uh, dispersion's a bit iffy. Uh, damage is questionable at times, but I think it's probably more about being at tier 5 than anything else. Uh, she was fun, did enjoy it, um, have been through the missions, and she is available in the premium shop now. And if you don't want to get her, you can play through the missions that are available over the next month, and then you will earn the Exeter for free yourself. Uh, thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe and enter any comments below on the video. Until we sync again, bravado out.